Hello, welcome to my tech fan. Creative sent me a Falcon 2 Pro for the testing. This is 40 watt version. I could see on their 10 years anniversary promotion that they have a 60 watt version too. I already tested Falcon 2 40 watt version, but that was open engraver. And currently I'm on my workplace because I have this class uh, CD printing in food industry. And my students uh, saw that I am testing laser engravers too, and they asked me to present one. I wasn't too happy about the idea from the safety reason, I cannot give to everybody safety glasses, but actually this one I can present because of this uh, enclosure structure, it is much safer, even the fumes I can exhaust through these windows and we don't need those safety glasses. More about safety later, first let's see some specifications. Just to mention most important parameters, the engraving area is 400 by 415 millimeters, this is enclosed 40 watt diode laser. It arrives with RSS pump, positioning camera, exhaust fan and LED lights. And it also includes several safety sensors. As always, few words about the safety. Don't forget, laser engravers are tools and not toys and they require some safety equipment. The most important, I always mention, especially for those open engravers, are those safety glasses, but for everybody in that room. Now this is fully enclosed and actually we have this protection already around it. The second thing is that I suggest always to use it in good ventilated room because of the smoke and fumes. Now this is enclosed and we can exhaust the fumes outside of the window. And the third one also very important that uh, you should never leave the engraver without the attention, especially during cutting the wood, it may catch flame. But again very good with this that uh, it is made from flame retentive material and we have the flame sensor too. And actually the air assist helps reduce the risk of the catching the flame. My students will arrive in approximately one hour and together with them I will unbox and assemble this engraver but off camera because I'm not sure who wants to be in the front of camera we have very crazy logs here in EU but anyway uh, this engraver doesn't need assembling because it is fully assembled and later when they leave or before the next lesson I will finish my review and the video. The packaging is good, everything is well protected in this black foam but only now I realize that this requires some assembling. A small correction, so it requires some assembling, but as I mentioned, it will be off camera because my students are here and they don't want to be in my video. Or maybe who don't want to be in the video, he can go home. But it looks like it will require some uh, assembling time, but I have big help here. So these are some acrylic panels for the enclosure. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe this is for the cutting bed. But as you can see, many small parts, so it really requires some assembling time. LED lights, and I can see some camera properly for the positioning. This is the laser module, this is the 40 watt laser module, because also uh, we have here a 1.6 watt smaller module. And I believe that this is much better for the engraving, because uh, strong lasers combine eight diodes into one beam, which is great for the cutting, but for the engraving, uh, one actually would be better. The main unit is already assembled, like with the Falcon 2. The power supply unit, this is very strong one. The output is 24 volts and 10 amperes. <laughs> we even get some safety glasses. This is pipe for the air, and I believe that this is the bottom part for the engraver. Ah yes, and we also have this air assist pump. And it can be connected to the laser engraver, so it can be operated from the software. It is assembled and we already had some test engraving and uh, the lesson was finished so the students left a few minutes ago. We will continue next week. For the assembling uh, we needed approximately one, one and a half hours and uh, the reason that we need a little bit more time is this uh, user manual which is not detailed enough. It is very nice to see these colorful pictures but uh, they are not detailed enough so very often uh, we wasn't sure in which position we have to connect two parts. So, a little bit more details, uh, bigger pictures would be recommended. I will check the digital version of this user manual, but for the printing one, this is a quite weak. So I will have now break, but uh, tomorrow I will continue with the testing using my regular materials, but for you it will be in a few seconds. And after one week I'm continuing with recording and I even have the level layer microphone and sorry at the beginning of the video, I didn't know that I will have so much echo in this room using that uh, short microphone. Before I start with my regular material testing, first let's take a closer look of this enclosed Falcon 2. 
on the right side we have the key and emergency stop button and again we have these uh, buttons for the offline engraving but uh, in my experience uh, it is not so comfortable for using because it would be much better if they could integrate here some kind of screen the offline engraving using the SD card the USB Type-C connection with the laptop, the power and the switch on the other side is connection for the air assist pump this is for the air and this is for the power this means it can be operated from the software on the right side we also have the switch for the LED light it can be automatic or we can turn it on if we want to and similar on the other side we have the switch for the exhaust fan it can be automatic or turning on manually additionally we have another USB type C plug and this one is for the USB camera this means we need two USB plugs on the computer but this is not a bad solution let me explain you this having a separate cable for the USB camera allow us to use the library for example because it can handle any USB camera and it can be used for the positioning I already tested some laser engravers which has only one cable but also have a camera but we are forced to use their own software which is not bad but library is some kind of industrial standard by the way Creality is also working on their own software I'm one of the testers that theoretically I shouldn't uh, talk about it, but they also mention it on the 10 years anniversary, so this is not new information. As additional safety feature, it recognizes when the closure is open and it will not do engraving. On the model we have some LEDs, now I can see the air is blinking, this means it cannot detect the air through the model. This is for the fire detector, it's green now, okay, and the lens that it requires the cleaning, but now it is okay. And here we have the switch we can change between the precise and the normal with precise we will disable approximately half of the dies this means we will have sharper engraving this is only manual switch but it would be great in future if we could operate this from the software for example i want to do the engraving with the sharper point and later i want to do cutting with the full power in normal mode i just added the calibration file to the light burn and i want to test the camera but it requires the calibration the first step is the lens calibration and for this i have to print this circle pattern only later i noticed that this pattern was included it was a little bit hidden between the sample materials and this is speed up video i'm just following the instructions on the screen placing this uh, printed pattern in different corners and uh, clicking the next button the next is camera alignment and for this I will use these paper sheets of course I have to reduce the power of the laser during this it engraves these crosses and then I have to stretch them on the camera the engraving was finished approximately in two and a half minutes and I have to mark those uh, points and now let's check the accuracy of the camera let's draw some small circle around this cross I forgot to change the line type but anyway we can see the accuracy which is approximately one and a half millimeters in x and y direction mm, it could be better I don't want to play more with the calibration but uh, for me so far it will be enough I want to use it only for approximate positioning and now I can start testing with my regular materials different plywood uh, MDF wood anodized aluminum stainless steel 20 millimeter wood and at the end I'm expecting something similar like with the previous Falcon because it has the same module this is 3mm thick plywood, but first I'm starting with the engraving. As expected, similar results like with the previous Falcon. This is a 60% line from 1000 to 6000 mm per minute speed, and uh, I think this one looks the best to me. The next project I will prepare in a laser JBL. And here you can see my settings. The position of the engraving should be approximately here but uh, now I cannot use the camera so I have to use the laser point for the positioning. I hope it will be okay because it is hard to see through this enclosure under this angle. Now you can see how important is the camera with the enclosed engravers. I wanted to place it approximately here but uh, I cannot see through this enclosure. So camera really helps but for that we need the uh, light burn otherwise the engraving is okay and now let's repeat the same engraving in precise mode using the same settings yes noticeable sharp or thinner lines but the position is horrible let's go back to the line burn next we'll be engraving a grayscale image and here you can see my settings this is some real-time footage of the engraving which is approximately at 80 percent and i think it's a little bit darker than i would like to finish in approximately three minutes let's see it 
<laughs> well, I did some experimenting here, but now I can see that it could be lighter, but actually not bad for the first attempt. But now let's do some cutting on this 3mm thick plywood. I will just try this for speeds, placing here. I'm not sure is it visible on screen too, but here I have a bigger amount of the smoke. But this exhaust fan and enclosure works correctly. Nice, the cutting was successful up to 1000 mm per minute speed full power. But as you can see in Y direction it is stronger compared to the X direction. And now I see here the effect of the air assist with the cutting side by side. And side by side, air, no air. The edges are much sharper and here we can see some burn edges. But actually this is not bad because this is very strong laser and it can do this cutting on higher speeds. I will just cut off this plywood and then move to the 5mm version. And I have another documentation card. This is 5mm thick plywood and this was cut out with the previous 40 watt dye laser Creality Falcon and as you can see all parts are cut out so now I will go from 400 up to 700 mm per minute speed. Import setting the new focus and I will use this second step password between 4 and 6 mm. Well, it looks like I got the same results like with the previous Falcon. So the biggest speed is 500 mm per minute speed. And look how sharp is this cutting. On 6 and 700 mm per minute, again, we can see difference in X and Y axis. In Y axis, it was cut and out, but in X, not. This is 3 millimeter thick MDF wood, and this was with the previous 40 watt dye laser. And it looks like I have to go higher, from 500 maybe to 800 mm per minute speed here. Now as you can see this MDF wood is very really hard for the cutting for some laser engravers, but uh, look at this. At the first look up to 700 mm per minute speed is fine, look how sharp are the cutting out parts. But I noticed this is the other side and probably I can push out this part, yes. And now 3mm thick black acrylic and I really hate the smell of the burned acrylic so I'm very happy that I will do this inside the enclosure. The sun started with the shining and it's a little bit hard to see through this enclosure especially with the camera but anyway let's continue. Cutting out nicely on 4 and 500 mm per minute speed, on 6 and 700 not really, but let's check the other side. Let's try to cut this 20 by 20 mm wood and usually I do this on 100 mm per minute speed, but let's do it faster on 200 mm per minute. Setting the new focus is important and I will use this third step and I will cut it along the X axis which is weaker. without any problems and X axis is weaker for this laser engraver and look every edge is so sharp. And now engraving on anodized aluminum which I really like because it doesn't smell and it is not sensitive to settings. Let's do some circles here. 4, 6 and 8000 mm per minute speed full power and they look equal. And now engraving stainless steel. This was engraved with the previous Falcon, but I don't have to go with so slow speeds. <laughs> this place starts with, with the warping. Instead, I will try to go a little bit faster and to have some nice engraving like this one. On SD card, I found this uh, table with recommended parameters. And here I have for the stainless steel recommended 40% and 6000 mm per minute speed. Sounds weak, but let's give it a try. Interesting it works and looks like I found the parameters for the blue color because if you're not familiar if you are playing with the settings You can get different colors on the stainless steel So this was engraved on 400 mm per minute speed and this is really deep engraving And this is much lighter but permanent too Now some conclusions for the end well, I really like this Falcon 2 laser engravers and actually the previous one without enclosure is still my favorite. I'm regularly using it with the Creality enclosure. It has advantage that it is easier for the storing. I can take out the engraver and rotate 90 degree angle and it takes less space and same for the tent. Now advantage of this system is that light in the camera 
which is uh, for the positioning inside the enclosure almost mandatory because it is very hard to do the framing watching that laser spot inside. Now I was expecting a little bit better quality camera. The image is somehow blurred, not so sharp, but for this positioning it is far enough. The precision is let's say 2 mm approximately in my case, but it also depends of your calibration. I don't really like this uh, cutting bed. I had some uh, failed engravings but, uh, exactly because of this. When I was cutting those puzzles, sometimes they fall out and sometimes they rotate partly and the module hit that part and moved the complete uh, plate and actually I had a failed engraving. So I better like the honeycomb grid, it is much more safer for this kind of cutting works. Uh, of course we can rotate those plates and then we can have the flat surface, but in that case we don't have that nice airflow. Well, otherwise, really decent laser engraver, I, I can highly recommend it, and it is very safe, you saw, so uh, I was able to work here to the, together with my students, and it has uh, many safety features too. If you have other experience with this laser engraver, write me a few lines down in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and happy and safe engraving and cutting.